Do you need these products in your life? No. Are they going to hurt you? No. Hey guys, I'm Razia. Welcome to my channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and don't forget to hit the notification bell to be notified of my weekly uploads. And you can also follow me on my social medias on Instagram and TikTok. I received the products a few weeks ago. I ordered them on the launch date as soon as I could. Actually, not even the launch date, the pre-launch. They had like an early release and I ordered them then and it took them a month to get to Australia. A month. Every time I get something from America, it really takes its sweet time to get here. So something to bear in mind if you're on this side of the world and you want to get your hands on some Fenty, it might take a long time. So now, obviously, everyone was really excited when Fenty Skin was announced because it's Rihanna and everyone loves Rihanna. She announced she's going to do a skincare line and everyone's ex expectations were all the way up here because skincare, especially in the past year or so, has become quite popular. A lot of people are talking about skincare in a way I don't think anyone was before. We have skincare influencers now, trying anyway. We even have dermatologists and chemical cosmetic formulators that are on social media as well that are trying to give us knowledge about skincare to everyone as well. So I think skincare has transformed a lot and people are becoming a lot more aware of what's in their products, what they need to be in their products and what shouldn't be in their products. If you were following the conversation around the launch, you would have noticed that there was a lot of discussion about fragrance in skincare when Fenty was announced. Fragrance is something in skincare that in recent times had been really demonized by social media as well, especially because of social media. For the most part, fragrance in skincare is okay. According to studies and dermatologists that I've seen, um, only about two to 5% of the population has a, has a fragrance allergy. So it's not as big of a deal as it has as it had been made out to be. If you're sensitive to fragrance, okay, avoid it in your skincare. Otherwise, it's not the worst thing in the world to have in your products. And it helps to increase the skincare experience. It makes it smell nice. It makes it feel nice to use. So the brand launched with three products. You've got the Total Cleanser, you've got the Fat Water Toner Serum, and you've got the Hydrovisor Moisturizer with SPF. So I'm gonna take you through all three products and let you know my thoughts and then we'll wrap it up with a nice summary on the brand and some pros and cons about the brand as well. Make sure you stay right till the end, guys. I'm trying to get that watch time up so we can get monetized. Please, if we can get one good thing out of 2020, it would be great to have a monetized YouTube channel. Thank you. Leave me a like and a comment as well down below. Let me know if you guys are gonna be interested in trying Fenty Skin Out at all. So. I'm really interested to know what you guys think. All right, we're gonna start with the cleanser. This is the Fenty Skin Total Cleanser. This cleanser is supposed to be two in one. It's supposed to be able to remove all makeup and clean the skin properly as well. Now, if you've been following my content at all, you know I'm a fan of double cleansing, which is basically the practice of taking an oil-based cleanser, working that into the skin to remove makeup, and then following that with a water-based cleanser. Now, this cleanser is supposed to be able to do both of those steps in one go. Now, in terms of the ingredients in the cleanser, you've got some gentle surfactants in there. You've also got a lot of antioxidant-rich botanical type of ingredients, including Barbados cherry, green tea, fig, and these are supposed to have antioxidant properties that help to soothe and repair the skin. I'm obviously not an expert in terms of cosmetic formulations or whatever, but I don't know how effective it is to have antioxidants in a cleanser or these types of botanicals that are supposed to have antioxidants. So whether those ingredients have time to be able to do what they're supposed to do, uh, what their claims um, are supposed to do, I'm not sure, but that's okay. Now this cleanser lathers up nicely to a nice creamy lather. It's quite a nice texture to use, I'm not going to lie. And I'm also going to do the cotton pad test. So I'm going to use the cleanser, then I'm going to take a cotton pad with some micellar water and use that across the face to see if it picks up any makeup that the cleanser didn't. So that's going to be interesting to see. And yes, obviously the cleanser does have fragrance. Again, up to you whether that's something that bothers you or not. My skin doesn't like too much fragrance. It can handle a little bit. But if there is way too much fragrance in all of my skincare products, my skin really doesn't like that. And my skin isn't a fan of more natural fragrances, like things like essential oils, for example. 
not a fan whatsoever. And I have to admit, they do smell really, really great. I love the smell of, of these products. <laughs> now, this is a foaming cleanser and I do have dry skin. So personally, when I use this cleanser and then I wash it off, I do get a bit of a tight feeling on my skin. That's not the best feeling to have after using a cleanser. I prefer more hydrating cleansers these days. And just coming out of winter as well, there's been a lot of dry weather. My skin is already naturally dry. So I think using the foaming cleanser was a little bit too much for my skin. I think this cleanser would be ideal for someone with more oily to combo skin. As long as you don't have any fragrance sensitivities, this is, pretty, this is a pretty decent cleanser. Next we have the Fat Water Toner Serum. Now this product is pretty interesting, <laughs> so let's get into that. So the full name of this toner is the, the Fat Water Pore Refining Toner Serum. And as you can see, it's a, bit of, it's a bit thicker than a toner, but it's not as thick as a serum. So definitely, it's literally a fat water. Now, this toner caused a bit of a fuss when it was launched, and we're going to talk about that and why and why everyone was so up in their feelings about this toner, basically. <laughs> this toner is supposed to target pores, minimize the appearance of pores, help with dark spots as well, and fight shine on the skin without stripping it. The main reason that everyone got so worked up about this toner is because it is made with witch hazel, which is the second ingredient, which means there's quite a bit of witch hazel in there. Now, witch hazel is a bit of a controversial ingredient, and it's an ingredient that literally people love to hate in the skincare world. And why is that? So there are two main reasons why that is. Witch hazel is a plant extract that is very antioxidant rich. One of the antioxidants that it has a high concentration of are tannins. And tannins are an astringent. Astringents basically work to tighten pores on the skin, remove oil, and help dry the skin out, basically. Having a high concentration of tannins in witch hazel really gives it its astringent properties, which means it dries the skin, it removes excess oil on the skin. But basically, witch hazel dries the skin out, which, which depending who you are, is a good or a bad thing for your skin. Another problem with witch hazel is in the manufacturing process. Alcohol is very commonly used in the distillation process of witch hazel, and this can lead to there being high amounts of alcohol in witch hazel products. Alcohol is not the best thing for the skin, especially in very high concentrations. It can be very, very drying to the skin, sensitizing. So the combination of tannins and high alcohol concentration in witch hazel just overall makes it a not so great ingredient. But in terms of Fenty skin, they have used witch hazel water, which means the witch hazel has not been distilled with alcohol, instead it's been distilled with water. So we don't have to worry about there being high concentrations of alcohol in this toner. Now in terms of the tannins, so astringents in general are okay for oily skin types. If you have dry skin, you don't need tannins, you don't need witch hazel, you don't need to be drying your skin out at all, it's already dry. If you have oily skin, you may benefit from using witch hazel or using an astringent. As long as it doesn't contain any harmful essential oils or any harmful alcohol or high alcohol concentrations, there's no reason to worry about it. So in terms of the Fenty Skin Fat Water, it's made with witch hazel water, so there's no reason to worry about the witch hazel. I have dry skin, this toner did nothing for me and it's not made to do anything for me because there's nothing in there that would help me at all. It's made to reduce refined pores and help with shine. I don't have shine, I have dry skin. I, I need shine. <laughs> Along with the witch hazel, this toner also has niacinamide in there. Niacinamide is another ingredient that's really great at, at balancing oil production on the skin. It can also help with minimizing the appearance of pores and it can also help with helping the appearance of dark spots. So that's a great ingredient to have included in this toner. And there's a few other antioxidants in there. Also got Barbados cherry in there. You've got Australian lemon myrtle. You've got green tea and fig in there as well. So similar to the cleanser, you've got a lot of antioxidant rich botanicals in there. But lastly, we're gonna talk about the sunscreen, the Hydrovisor Invisible Moisturizer with SPF. I'm just going to clear up something that confused me when I initially got these products in case it confuses you as well. Now, when I first saw the launch, the sunscreen was advertised as SPF 30. When I first received this product, I noticed that it said on there, Fenty Skin SPF 15. And SPF 15, by the way, is nowhere near enough SPF protection. So I was a bit confused. I'm like, why is it SPF 15 when it's supposed to be SPF 30? Then I did some digging and I figured it all out. So I'm gonna just clear up that confusion for you now. So sunscreens in Australia are regulated by the Therapeutic Goods Administration, so the TGA. 
And sunscreen regulations in Australia are very, very tough. I think one of the toughest in the world. So it's very hard to get a sunscreen approved by the TGA. And this is for many reasons. We Sunscreen is very important in general for many reasons, but especially in Australia, we, we have the highest skincare cancer rate in the world. And we also have a very high UV index. The sun in Australia is especially damaging. So you wanna make sure you're protecting your skin at all times. But when it comes to sunscreens that aren't manufactured in Australia and haven't been approved by the TGA, there is a bit of a loophole in the regulations. So in Australia, any sunscreen or cosmetic product that is listed at higher than SPF 15 has to be approved by the TGA. So a lot of companies get around this by labeling their products as SPF 30, even if it's labeled as a higher SPF in another country. So for example, American sunscreens, if they labeled as SPF 50 over there, here to get them sold here, and so that they don't have to go through the restrictions and regulations, they just call them SPF 15. It's literally the exact same product, exact same formulation. It just has a different label here in Australia because of our restrictions. Personally, I really appreciate those restrictions because they're made with the Australian sun and conditions in mind. That's just a little bit of background information about the SPF and why the packaging says what it says. In case you're wondering, in case you bought the products, and you weren't sure. This is a two-in-one product. It's a moisturizer and it also is a sunscreen. And it's made with chemical filters, which means it has absolutely no white cast on the skin, which is great. I also love that in the in the marketing of this brand and the messaging behind this brand, it there's a lot of emphasis on people of color wearing sunscreen because we have this misconception. I had this as well for many years growing up that I'm not even that dark, but I thought because I wasn't white, I didn't have to wear sunscreen, which is crazy. Everyone has to wear sunscreen. It doesn't matter how dark you are, you are susceptible to sun damage. The sun is what it is, very harsh on the skin. Now, of course, we have Fenty Beauty and now we have Fenty Skin. If Rihanna was gonna come out with an SPF, of course she was gonna make one that is compatible with makeup. So this product sits beautifully underneath makeup, does acts as a makeup primer, essentially, doesn't doesn't move the makeup around and it doesn't cause any peeling or anything like that and there's no white cast so you don't have that horrible flashback that you would have with traditional sunscreens so that's definitely something great about this product it's made to work well with makeup made to work well with skin of color it's not the thickest moisturizer in the world so if you do have dry skin whether this is going to be enough for you or not is up to you to decide depending on how thick you like your moisturizer to be but if you have oily skin i think this is definitely good for you because it's not that thick at all so it won't feel too heavy or greasy on the skin it's got some great ingredients in there as well it's got glycerin it's got safflower niacinamide hyaluronic acid so it's a great decent moisturizer and it's got a nice smell as well and you've got your spf in there as well so so I think overall this is a good brand. I mean, we can't expect anything less from Fenty, to be honest. Um, good brand, love the brand messaging. I love the diversity in the marketing and the emphasis on sunscreen and skin protection for people of color. I also love that she included men and women in her advertising. I also appreciate that the products are vegan, cruelty-free, and that there is a high emphasis on recycling the packaging. Really great brand message. Now, in terms of the cons about this brand, I feel that the products are mainly geared towards people with oily skin. If you have dry skin, these products really won't do much for you. They might actually be a little bit damaging if you have dry skin and you're using these on a consistent basis. The cleanser's a little bit stripping and the toner is made for oily skin. No doubt about it. It doesn't have any benefits in there for dry skin. The moisturizer SPF might be hydrating enough for you. That's up to you for, to decide. For me personally, I like a really thick moisturizer, so it's not enough, but you can layer your own moisturizer underneath and put that on top if that's something you want to do. If you do have any skin issues, acne, uh, irritation, sensitivities, rosacea, whatever it might be, these products are not gonna do anything for you. This is not a treatment skincare line. This is just a basic skincare line. Whether later on in the future we see some products that have a little bit more, that have active ingredients in there, I'm sure we will down the line see more active ingredients incorporated into these skincare products and maybe some products geared uh, specifically for sensitive skin, fragrance free, etc. 
as for now, this is not a treatment line. If you have any skincare issues, these products are not going to do anything for you. For me personally, I don't have naturally good skin. I need to work to make sure my skin stays healthy. I need to, I need to keep it nice and hydrated. I need to keep the acne away. And these products aren't going to help me do that. So if you have skin, that's fine and doesn't need too much help, then these products are okay. If you have skin that needs a bit of help, this isn't the these, this isn't the brand for you. That's just something to keep in mind if you are thinking of getting these products. So I hope this review was informative. I hope you learned something about the products and I helped you make a decision as to whether you're going to try them out or not. Let me know down below if you have tried them already or, or if you're thinking about it and leave me a like and a comment down below as well. So yeah, that's that. Thank you so much for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.